Hello and welcome to another video by the AM Academy. Now in our last video, we unboxed and calibrated the Freescan UE7, a handheld laser scanner by Shining 3D. Today, we actually want to use it to scan something. And the first part I have here is this, well, it's a car wheel. And I want this part in the middle to be scanned. So I've already put a bunch of markers on it so the scanner can actually do that. I've started up the software and, so let, and let's get right into it. So new project group, I'm just gonna overwrite my test folder that I had previously uh, because, well, I only used it for testing. Now this step right here is actually quite important because this is where I select the resolution. Keep in mind, resolution and accuracy are not the same thing. I will still scan at the same accuracy using a lower resolution. What the resolution is, is the distance between two points in the point cloud. Now, if I scan something very small or say uh, something that I wanted to use for quality assurance, such as this part right there, where it's crucial that I have an extremely high resolution of every area of the part, I might choose a higher detail. For something such as this car wheel, I don't need that high resolution. All it would do is increase my scan time, increase the processing time, and the medium detail is actually perfectly sufficient. Now it does say medium detail, but even this has a point distance of 0.5 millimeters. So it's not like it'll be a very rough scan. This will improve speed, efficiency, and uh, you should always try and adjust your resolution um, according to the part that you're currently scanning. Uh, don't just always go for the highest resolution that will not create your best use experience. So I'm gonna stick to the medium detail, uh, start apply, and now I can start scanning this. And I'll actually uh, start scanning one half uh, in the normal mode because right now I have different options here. I can scan normal, reflective, or black. And what those are are presets for the settings below the brightness and the data settings. So if you can see uh, that if I click the next button, the settings below will change as well. Um, now in normal, the brightness is at a uh, medium point and the data setting is at minimum, whereas, uh, or rather at uh, data integrity, no data quality that is. Quality priority exactly and on the other side it's integrity now for re Reflective parts the integrity is the crucial part would really make sure that it picks up every single thing that it sees um, Whereas with normal the quality is more important where it will filter out some of the things it sees But doesn't believe belongs to my object and playing around with this can yield better results when your part is highly reflective Such as this part right here Right without further ado I have my start button on the back. I'll just click it and uh, that will let me start scanning my part. You can already see it's picking up the wheel and it's picking up most of the inner area as well, but it's a bit finicky to really get it. The wheel on the other hand, because it's not reflective, it's not like reflective black, actually works very, very easy. Um, it's very, very easy to pick that up. Now, if I change my setting over to reflective, uh, which this inner area is, and then I start scanning again, pressing the button once, enters a preview mode, pressing the button again, starts actually scanning. Uh, it is far easier and actually quicker and yielding better results scanning with the reflective mode for this inner area of the wheel. So I just move the scanner back and forth a bit, rotate my tire, and really make sure I get most of the nooks and crannies. Now, in this case, it is more a, a demonstration part. I'm not planning to actually uh, work with this anymore. So if I'm missing a small area, I'm not gonna fuss too much about it, but I do want a nice quality result uh, to really illustrate how easy and quick this can be. And uh, I think that's good. Then let me change the angle a bit. So I look at the uh, bars from the other side at the struts uh, and really get that area as well. So just like that, that looks good. A bit more here, that looks good. A bit more there. This is an area where I haven't picked up everything yet. 
Okay. Starting to look pretty good. Look at it from above a little bit. Really try to get everything that is here. Make sure I catch all the little areas. Okay. I think this is already quite a nice result. Um, I think you can see most of the areas. It picked up a little bit of the table underneath, but by and large, it's actually a very good result. Considering I spent about, what, a minute? A minute and a half on scanning this. I have the little air, air inlet right there. And uh, yeah, if I wanted to use this in a CAD program, this would probably already be enough. Now, if I wanted to scan the entire outside of the tire as well, I would probably need a few more markers around it. But you can see how easy and fast it can be to actually scan an entire car tire. Um, so, just for fun, I'll actually... Oh, nope, that's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to stop uh, the scan because I wanted to change the setting again. Let's try it with black and then try and scan a bit of the outside of the car tire. Uh, so it has to find some of the markers that I have on my rotating plate. And now I can uh, try and move around, but it's not quite happy. It doesn't see enough markers. That's what I said uh, with needing a few more. I think I'll just uh, call it here. Try one more time. Find the markers. Pick everything up. And stop complaining. Well, it's still complaining. One more time. So it sees plenty of markers, and now I'm going to start scanning. And every time it doesn't see enough markers, it'll start complaining at me. But you can see I'm picking up most of the tire by just holding my scanner stationary, rel relying on the markers that I have on my rotating plate. Ooh, this is a difficult spot. Should probably put a marker or two more down here. Um, and the little music that you probably hear, that's the scanner telling me that it's struggling. It's either when I'm too far away, too close, or it doesn't see enough markers. But uh, I think this is a pretty good result now. And I could do the other side, but I think for the demonstration purposes here, uh, this is actually quite sufficient. So you can see it has the nice tire profile uh, picked up as well. I think this is, uh, for me right now, a perfectly good result. Now the next step here would be to uh, generate a point cloud out of it. That will take some time, uh, depending on your computer's processing power. And after that, you can actually mesh the model and then export that as, as an STL. So as I said, this is going to take a little bit. I'm going to start the process, and then I'll be right back once it is done. All right, so the point cloud generation was successful. Uh, let me switch this over so you can actually see most of it. Um, Again, the model looks really nice, uh, especially all the uh, reflective areas of the part. You can see there's uh, some small areas missing, such as right here. And if I really wanted a high quality model, I would go back now and scan just that part once more to really make sure I picked everything up. But for the demonstration purposes uh, of today, I think uh, this is entirely sufficient. What does annoy me though is I still have some parts of the table that I picked up as well, and I can easily remove those using the cutting plane tool by Shining 3D. So I'm gonna click that, and I'm gonna use markers because I have markers on the rotating plate. I can just, holding down Shift, select uh, markers like this. And I need at least three, but uh, I could use more if I wanted to. Let's pick up, uh, pick up that one there as well. Now I have selected three markers, I will create that plane, and as you can see, anything that is below that area will get cut away, but my tire itself will be unaffected. Now if I wanted to change the positioning of this uh, plane, I can either use uh, sliders here on the side, or I could uh, just click on the plane and drag it to wherever it needed to go. Uh, for my intents and purposes, I just want to get rid of the little bits at the bottom, click apply, It'll remove those areas, 
and then I can keep uh, moving on with my part. Uh, next step would be to mesh it. There's this button in the bottom right here. I'm going to click that. Once again, it will take a little bit of time. With other handheld scanners, such, a, such as the Einscan H or the HX, you had the option of choosing between a watertight or an unwatertight model. The watertight model being one where all the holes in your scan are automatically filled. However, because of the work that you usually do with the UE7, they do not even offer that option anymore. Instead, it is always going to be an unwatertight model. Generally, the uh, recommended parameters are perfectly fine, but you could enable a bigger filter. You could uh, remove small floating parts if your scan has such uh, issues. I would generally recommend keeping the max triangles at this number. Increasing that number will very massively increase the calculation time of this next step. Once again, depending on processing power, this will take a bit. I'll be right back once it is done. Okay, our uh, model is generated. I will uh, stay in this view. Now I could uh, look at my model and uh, fine tune it. You can see that right here, this is one of the markers uh, that the software removed, but apparently I put it too close to the edge. To, so the software um, didn't know where the model ended and where the marker ended. So it just removed the entire marker uh, completely. I have a couple of other issues like this, such as right there, right here. Now, uh, if I actually wanted to scan this, this is not what I would want. I would rem I would move those markers to different locations. I would peel them off, uh, replace them somewhere else. So I did not have these issues for today. I'm just going to leave it as is. So I could uh, change a number of these settings. I'm going to click confirm. I am happy with this. And now I could save the scan uh, in a variety of file formats. Uh, such as STL, OBJ, 3MF, etc. But before I do that, I could also use the selection of tools on the left hand side to further post process my part, such as actually filling any of the holes that may still uh, be left in my part. Anything that's outlined in green now uh, would be one of those holes, and uh, I could choose them and uh, have them calculated closed by the software where I can remove more small floating parts, I can smooth the mesh, I can optimize it, uh, but overall, none of that is something that I want to do now. Instead, uh, I'm quite happy with this result. You can see how even the writing is entirely legible. And uh, all I want to do is save my scan to my desktop. I will call this the uh, tire, and then I will simply save it as an STL. And now I can use that STL file to work with in any other software. Right, great. So that's how easy it was to scan this car tire. Uh, the biggest time investment was actually putting the markers on the tire itself because the scanning process was so easy and so quick that it took almost no time at all. That's all I have for you today. Uh, thank you very much for watching. If you do have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And uh, do subscribe if you like the, this type of video because we'll have more coming your way. Specifically, in the next ones, I will still be scanning the front of the scooter and uh, this old VW uh, grill. And then, of course, in the future, we'll have more videos concerning scanning, 3D printing, all these sorts of things. So thanks very much for watching, and I hope to see you next time.